Hello everybody. We're going to look at adding and subtracting rational functions. And with this, just like any type of fraction we have, in order to add or subtract, we need a common denominator. So with this with these two problems that I have written here, there is a simple trick you could say to be able to solve it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to work the first one and talk it through. And then I would like you to pause the video after we do the first one. By all means, you may start right now. You may pause it and see if you can get it. And then after we pause, uh, we'll pause the video, allow you to be able to work the second one using what I show you. Okay, so let's begin. Well, in order to add or subtract, we need a common denominator. And we can look at these and see that, okay, this is not a common denominator. X is positive x is negative, y is negative, y is positive. But there's a trick. If I look at, for instance, this denominator right here, and I'll work it over here to the side. If I were to factor out a negative 1, well, anytime you multiply or divide by a negative 1, it causes your signs to flip. So y becomes a negative y and minus x becomes plus x. And we could look at that. A negative 1 times a negative y is y. A negative 1 times a positive x is a negative x. So what we have here, these are equivalent. This is equal to this. And then what I can do, just the commutative property of addition, I can rearrange what's inside my parentheses to where it's x minus y. And look what I have here. I have x minus y, x minus y. But I still have this negative 1. Well, the commutative property of multiplication allows me to just pull this negative sign in front of the fraction. Remember, with the fraction, if I have a negative 1 half, I could write it like this, a negative 1 over 2, or I could write it as 1 over a negative 2. All those are equivalent. I could just take that negative 1 that's in the denominator and pull it up. So let me rewrite this now for what we have. That way I can illustrate it. Okay, I now have a common denominator except for that negative 1. Well, you know I don't have to have a 1 there. I can just have that negative sign. A negative and a negative gives you a positive. So what happens here are these two, let me move that up, the negative sign up some, there you go. These two, this negative one and this negative sign, they become a plus sign. And I've now incorporated that negative one into my problem, just rearranging it some, to where this is what I have. And now I have a common denominator. And what this simply turns into is 2x plus 3x, all of that over x minus y, which gives me 5x over x minus y. So the main thing here is that whenever you look at this, you, you kind of see a similarity. You say, oh, these are close. Look at being able to factor out a negative 1. factor out a negative. Then you use your commutative property to rearrange. For a lot of us, math is visual. Now, it's hard to just sit there and watch a problem being worked and say, okay, I understand this, I know how to do it now. you got to do it yourself. But setting yourself up for success, critically thinking about what you're doing. Okay, I factored out a negative sign. This, this is equal to this. These two are equal. It's the same thing. I just have it in a different form. And then structuring your work, making it to where you have the visual aesthetics with it, to where your brain doesn't have to look at for instance, this one, and, and understand, okay, well, that's x minus y, just like here. Rewrite it to where your brain actually sees it, and it helps you to be able to picture what you're doing. 
use the commutative property to do as such. Once you pull out that negative, then you're also using the commutative property. You're just moving that negative one around. Okay. So for number two, pause the video, work it, see if you get the same answer as I get. Hopefully we get the same answer. All right. So I look and I see my signs are opposite in each term in the denominator. This is a positive 3a, a negative 3a, a negative b, a positive b. So I know, and I'll just I'll use I'll do this denominator right here. If I were to say, or if I were to factor out a negative one, that's what I would end up with b minus 3a is equal to a negative 1 times the negative b plus 3a. If I were to take that negative 1 and multiply it, this is what I would get. And then I can simply rearrange inside of there. And now, look, I have 3a minus b, 3a minus b. I have a common denominator. I'm going to take that negative 1 and move it up there with the plus sign. And I'll, I'll write it a different way to help with the visual understanding. So I have plus a negative. Three a plus two b over three a minus b. And I don't visually I don't like this. Even if I'm looking at an integer like this, I don't. I don't care for, how can I say, I, I, I consider it to be busy whenever I have like 2 plus a negative 2. I don't like that plus sign and parentheses and a negative sign. How my brain would rather see it is this, simply 4 minus 2. So I can do the same right here. I can just simply say, okay, well that's 2a minus 3b over 3a minus b minus 3a plus 2b over 3a minus b. Okay, now we're, we'll, we'll look at a, an easy one here. Over, uh, over to the side. 3 fourths minus 1 fourth well, how we often teach fractions is that once you have a common denominator, the denominator stays the same. So the denominator is 4. And then the only math you do is up here. And you just simply have 3 minus 1, which is 2. But how I could also view this is 3 minus 1 over 4. Because there is a common denominator. I can put both of those numerators over the same denominator and it's still the same answer. Two-fourths which equals one-half. Well, whenever we're dealing with these rational functions and these rational expressions is that sometimes that's a little complicated so the easiest thing to do is to just combine your numerators together like I, like I have done down here to help you be able to visualize. Now this one here, make sure that negative goes to both of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in parentheses to make sure I distribute that negative sign. And then my common denominator, 3a minus b. Again, this is the only math that I have to do. I'm done with the denominator. This is all the math that I have to do. 2a minus 3b minus 3a minus 2b. Over 3a minus b. Well, 2a minus 3a is a negative a, and a negative 3b minus 2b is a negative 5b. Over 3a minus b. And there's nothing that I can factor out in these terms to simplify further. And that is my answer. 
again for these types of problems it is as simple as factoring out a negative sign factoring out a negative one to get your common denominators that negative one does not just go away it will end up being incorporated with the sign separating the two terms within your problem alright guys critically think and structure your homework and good luck on solving these types of problems